Lovers, it's me, Lois, with Aussie Lousy Knit Designs. I am really excited today because I am making a different kind of video than the ones that I've made so far. Um, so far, I've been really focusing on knitting tutorials, how to cast on, how to measure to cast on, that kind of thing. Um, but I haven't really done a video where I just talk about some knits. And I finally have my first pattern out. It's the Color and Texture Play Baby Blankets. Uh, if you follow me, I've been talking about this since January. It has been an absolute labor of love. Um, and it has taken so much time to get it done. But it also was a design that I was very intentional with. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to go through the design process with you if you're interested in it and really talk about the why of this pattern because it's so, so much more than a blanket. I have a blog post about it if you prefer reading um, and I'll put a link in the description to that and then I'm going to mention a freebie and I'll make sure to have a link to that in the notes and then of course to the actual pattern. So um, I'm going to show a picture of it but I've got the color and texture play baby blanket. Woo. It is not very big, um, which was intentional. Uh, the whole reason this pattern came about was my friend and I were knitting to donate baby blankets to the local NICU. And they have to be a specific size in order to donate those. And so uh, the size is small. And so uh, that's how I started with the size of the pattern and then it just grew from there. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is if you have if you have children or you've had babies, um, and I have, I have two, uh, one is 13 and one is 10. So it's been a long time since I had a baby. Uh, but when I was pregnant with both of them, um, both of them, I had to be on bed rest, which is the worst. And if you are a mom who's on bed rest or you're someone who has, <laughs> I am with you, sister, and it is hard. Um, I was on bed rest for three months with my first and six months with my second. It was truly awful. But the silver lining, which you try to look for, was that I had lots of time to do research. And so a lot of the research that fed into this pattern I did so, so many years ago, but the knowledge that I gained, I never lost. And so anyway, when we're thinking about making baby blankets for the local NICU, uh, you know, you want to give something that of course is beautiful because we don't make things, or at least not always, maybe for fun, uh, make things to be ugly. We want the patterns to be beautiful. We want the finished object to look stunning. And, um, but I wanted it to be more than that. I really wanted it to function at a higher level. Yes, keep the baby warm. Yes, be beautiful. But what else can I bring to the table? And so I remember uh, when I was pregnant, uh, learning that, well, and probably before that, that babies actually don't see color, they see black and white. And if you've noticed, things for newborns are often in black and white and red. It's because babies don't see color. And so uh, you can surround your baby with a monochrome color palette. Um, from newborn to about three months old, and then they can start seeing color. Um, so when I was thinking about making this blanket, and I knew that I wanted two colors, I knew that I wanted them to be extremely contrasting. And at this point, you're probably laughing because I would not call that extremely contrasting, <laughs> right? But what happens, you know, when we go yarn shopping, and um, I went yarn shopping, with this blanket in mind and knowing that I wanted two colors and then I went in and I saw this yellow baby bliss yarn uh, and it was so soft and I love the color yellow and I just said okay I'll get it and then the one that was right next to the yellow that I liked was a variegated yarn and um, 
and what I liked about it was it had gray in it and I love yellow and gray together. I don't know if that's just me, but the colors yellow and gray together are so great. I mean, it's mostly a white, um, but it, it changes to shades of light gray and it also <laughs> does yellow. And so it's not very contrasting, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, my intentions were good, but then you just fall in love with yarn. What are you going to do? Anyway, so let's see. Um, so I picked the yarn that this sample is knit in. I actually am knitting another one of these uh, for my friend and his wife just had their first baby. And so for theirs, I actually picked very contrasting colors. Um, and uh, it's a dark green and then like a lighter yellowish green. It's it looks it looks really cool. I'm excited to give it to him when it's finished. Anyway, um, so when we think about colors, I think we all know that colors um, are affected by our moods, but also that we communicate our feelings and our moods to others by the colors we choose to wear, even if we're not intentional. Like you know, I rarely get up and think I'm happy. I'm gonna put on yellow, <laughs> right? Uh, but, you know, if I'm having a happy day, I might pick that yellow shirt or a blue shirt, you know. And if I'm having a, a rough day or, or a sad day, I tend towards black. Um, but also, I love the color black. So, I could be happy in wearing black. I'm not saying this is 100%. But, uh, you know, we surround ourselves by color. And um, red is a color that is associated with so many different emotions. Uh, anger, anxiety, um, but also energy, like energetic and passion. And so um, whenever you're picking your colors for this baby blanket, I am, like I said, I was going to put a link, but I've created a PDF guide that has um, colors listed and then the different moods and feelings that they are associated with and then pairing suggestions both primary pairing and secondary pairing uh, because I know that like I can have an idea in my head hello and then go to the yarn store and I see something and then I see something else and I'm like oh I love these two and but it's <laughs> probably good if sometimes we go in with an idea of like okay I know that I want to convey uh, this particular feeling and that's definitely something that I thought about with this blanket was that the color choice was going to be so much more than here's two pretty colors or uh, it was going to be so much more about here's two colors that will comfort and soothe and bring joy and happiness to your child through their colors. And that was kind of the idea between choosing two colors and also to uh, stimulate the baby's brain through the visual seeing of two very contrasting colors. And I'm sorry I keep looking down, but I wrote down notes because I tend to go off on bunny trails. Anyway, uh, so the next part of this blanket that I wanted to talk about is uh, the texture. So when I was pregnant uh, with my babies, I did so much research on what I should be doing for my babies and what kind of play and that kind of thing. And uh, the number one thing I saw everywhere is texture, sensory bins, texture, sensory bins, texture, sensory bins. And I really overloaded on that kind of thing with my kids. So we had a bin with like pinto beans in it. And if you have a little one, this is the cheapest toy that you will ever get. It's just a bin and throw some pinto beans in it. Get some measuring cups, go to the dollar store, get some different things and let them play. I played with it. It was so soothing to just kind of dig into those pinto beans. The texture of that was really fun. Uh, we had water tables. We, I made, um, I don't know if you know what this is, but I think it was called magic sand. And it's like, you take flour and you mix it with baby oil. So it smells really good. And it's like soft as heaven to touch. It's really fun. And it, but it molds because, um, because of the 
baby oil. And again, go to the dollar store, get some sand toys, and you can put the, uh, the magic sand or whatever it's called into the mold and it will mold to that shape. And so that was so much fun to do. I digress. See what I mean about bunny trails? Anyway, so I knew <laughs> the point uh, that I wanted to have different textures for the blanket. And I've done some research and I have links in my blog, um, but there's, uh, they say that texture actually um, helps a baby develop their, their language skills. And I just, you know, thinking that through whenever we, t for babies, they learn everything through touching, right? Through their senses. Um, they're not, they don't communicate except for crying, right? And so it is through touch that they learn to communicate. And so, you know, you hand them their squishy teddy bear or you give them their so soft blankie. Um, if they get uh, in the bathtub, they're wet. And so they learn language from the words that we use while they're touching things. And that is how uh, the beginning of the development of language in babies' brains, which I just think is so fascinating. Uh, the other thing that physical touch and texture and sensory play does, it, it helps develop fine motor skill. And if you have a little kid right now uh, and you haven't thought about fine motor skills, you need to. Uh, get that, get those crayons, get whatever, uh, and let them use their fingers. Um, and that actually made me want to create this blanket and now I'm going to talk about the different stitch patterns. So one thing I know as a parent uh, and as a sibling is that when someone gives a handmade blanket like this, a pet peeve of parents if you're gifting is the holes. If there's holes in the blanket um, and a baby can stick their cute little chubby fingers in it, they will. And it can actually become a problem if if it starts cutting off circulation. And because babies, if you ever notice them with their handmade blankets, they're always like digging their fingers into it. And so anyway, so I knew I didn't want something with big holes. There's no big holes in here. Um, baby is not sticking their finger in the holes that there are, right? They're, they're little, even for a baby finger. And then the next piece that I wanted was a lot of texture. So I knew I had two colors. So I started on uh, casting on with, I don't know if you can see this, but I posted a lot, but this is the two color braided cast on. I love this cast on because it's so beautiful and you start off with your two colors. And I just think that's so fun instead of just doing one color. Anyway, and then I knew when I think of texture, one texture knit stitch that I love so much is actually the linen stitch. Um, if you've seen any of my things, I talk about it because it's one of my favorite stitches, but it was also one of the first stitch knit stitch patterns that I learned to make besides knitting and purling. Um, it was the linen stitch and I just love it because on the right side, the right side of the fabric um, is like it looks woven can you see that it looks woven and it's very flat feeling very flat but the back side is all bumpy like a seed stitch kind of and um so I really love this stitch for texture because um I hold it like this but you can hold it however but I usually put my thumb on the the woven side and so it's smooth and I love that and then I rub on the back with the bumps and it's just like a totally different feeling and it's, it's fun. Um, so I knew I wanted the linen stitch and I thought I'd make it a beautiful border. So that's how that ended up being the border. I also knew that I wanted my border to be prominent. I didn't want to have a tiny little border. I wanted the border to be something that you could actually feel. Um, and I tried to uh, grade that proportional to the size of the blanket that you're making. Um, and so this is a small size and it has just two inches of the linen stitch. Um, but the bigger the blanket, the bigger that border will be. 
The next thing that I did was I wanted to kind of continue the smoothness of um, the linen stitch with incorporating, let me try to show this, uh, see that kind of stock and knit um, in the yellow. I wanted to continue that color work there, but I wanted it to have more oomph, something different, something softer and squishier. And so I found the two color quilt stitch and I thought this is the one. I like it because it continues that sort of flat um, pattern that we're getting from the linen stitch. But then in between, in between we have these little pops of garter stitch. And so when it's in a different color and it adds a layer of texture. So I really liked that. Now, originally I had thought that I would do three different blocks. Uh, but then in the end, I just decided I really liked the garters, or sorry, the grill stitch. And I really liked um, how it flowed into the linen stitch. And so what I opted to do was two sections of grill stitch on either end and a different stitch pattern in the center of the blanket. Each of the uh, sections of stitches are divided by a linen stitch border. So that linen stitch is coming into play, not just around the blanket, but between each stitch section block, okay? Now, the, for the center one, this was a struggle. I'll be real with you. I tried so many different stitch patterns and there were so many that I liked. And in the end, it just wasn't working. It just was not working and I was frustrated and I frogged so much. I thought I would never finish the world's tiniest blanket. That's how much I frogged. Uh, but in the end, I ended up just doing a simple slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one in a mosaic sort of pattern. So let me show you that. Okay, so this is slipping one and knitting one. But what I decided to do to make it uh, use the colors equally because that was a really big deal to me that the colors would be balanced. There wouldn't be a primary color or a main color. It would be two colors that were used equally. And so in the pattern, that's why I say contrast color one and contrast color two and not main color contrast color because there is no main color. There's just two colors being used equally. So I'm going to pick this up and show you, I think. Yeah. So um, the way I decided to do that was in thirds again, because I'm a math nerd, but also um, because I thought, you know, look at that. Uh, the way I ended up doing it is so that there's this line and it's on either side of that. So there's a side with contrast color two, that's for me the variegated um, on the right side and the left side and the center is with the contrast color one as the dominant color. Um, and because I divide it in thirds, you're using basically the same amount of yarn for each color. And then finally, I got to the bottom of my knit design, which as I've already said, is that girl stitch. But I don't know if you'll notice, let's go back to section one real quick. Maybe if I can find it, I got turned upside down, okay. So let's look at this. I think this is one. Yeah. Okay. So what I want you to notice in that is the lines of the grill and the part of the garter stitch. So you'll see it's yellow with the variegated as the garter stitch in between. So on the flip side, uh, on the third section, I switch the colors. So contrast two becomes the dominant color and contrast one becomes uh, the highlight. So let's look at that. And because it's variegated, it's, um, there's parts that are yellow, uh, but that's okay. I still think this looks good. Anyway, so it's got the white there and then the solid yellow is the little pop of color. And so by s switching those contrasting colors as which one's the dominant, that is what's going to help you use equal amounts of yarn in the pattern. Um, and I like that. I like that it's even and balanced. Uh, of course, 
You could always change it up if you want to have a dominant color, go for it. Uh, because all you would have to do is not switch out uh, the contrast color one and the contrast color two in the third section. You could just keep it the same. It's no big deal. Um, and I also have had a lot of feedback that though I am a huge fan of the linen stitch, people find it tedious to knit. I don't, but you know, we're all different. And so I'm actually going to work on altering this uh, knit design a little bit and not to take away the linen stitch design that I already did because I prefer it that way and I love it but I'm gonna have an alternate border option so if people are not linen stitch fans what but if you're not um, and I do understand it can become tedious but um, you can knit the border what I'm thinking of doing is garter stitch stripes because that would be so easy to do. You would just knit and knit back with one color and then knit and knit back with the other color. And so we'd still have that even division of um, colors being used, uh, but it would uh, not have to be a linen stitch border. And also having the garter stitch would just be another layer of texture. So we'd be eliminating the linen stitch, but we wouldn't be eliminating an a different texture we just have a new one so I think it can work I just need to sit down and get that done and as soon as it's done if you've already bought the pattern or if you've already tested do not worry I'm going to update it and make sure that you get the PDF final version with those changes in case you would like to make it that way anyway I hope that you enjoyed this walk behind the scenes talking about the color and texture play baby blanket uh, it was truly, truly a fun design for me to make and one that I just put so much thought and feelings into. And so if you make it, I hope that you will hashtag me on your Instagram or, or link to me on Ravelry or, or message me on Facebook um, and just let me know that you made it. I'd love to see the pictures of it. I don't need to share them if you don't want me to. That's cool. But I'd love to see it because one thing I've enjoyed immensely is seeing all the different test knitters and the different yarns that they used and the different ways that theirs have come through. Some people using variegated yarns, some people using pure solids, and it's really fun to see that with just the change of yarn colors and yarn styles, how amazing the differences can be. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, will you hit the like button and subscribe? And uh, let's see, what are all the things I have to say? I'm on Instagram at Ozzy Wazzy Knits. And you can be on my Facebook page, follow it, like it, whatever that's called, um, at uh, Ozzy Lazzy Knit Designs. And I'm on Pinterest, Ozzy Lazzy Knit Designs. Uh, you're here with me on YouTube. I'm actually also going to put this on Instagram TV. Um, so you can watch it there. And my website is www.ozzylazzyknitdesigns.com and you could sign up for my uh, blog there. And I have a free pattern available, which is the two color linen stitch dishcloth or dish towel, which I had to rename to the scrub and swipe uh, because apparently that was too literal of a name and uh, it wasn't going over well with Ravelry. So. I changed the name, uh, but it's the same design. And so I'll put a link to that if you guys want to sign up for my newsletter and get a free pattern. You can do it in one fell swoop. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and happy knitting.